I gotta be honest, I think I kind of forgot that vet clinics even existed in The Sims 4. I don't really know how because I build all the time in this game, but I think it's been years since I last built a vet clinic. And so when I was touring some of your builds for my most recent shell challenge, I saw a few of you did vet clinics and I was feeling kind of inspired and now I want to build one myself. I think part of the problem that I have with the current existing vet clinic in the game is that it's a little bit too big and it's also a little bit too dark. I have that issue with most of the EA builds where there's just like literally not enough lights inside of them. And so for this build, I want to make something hopefully a little bit smaller and maybe a little bit more functional for like your everyday average gameplay. I tend to find that smaller builds usually work a little bit better because there's less for your sims to get distracted by. I hate to say it, but it's true. The sims are not very smart, so you kind of have to cater to them. So this here is the default Brindleton Pospital. Get it? It's actually quite cute and there's a couple of things from this that I really like and kind of want to keep and translate into my own build. For example, I love the sort of entrance waiting area and I love this big hallway that leads you across to all of the other rooms. It's like very easy for your sims to get around in this build. By default, it's got two exam rooms, one surgery room, and then like a little office slash sort of break room for the employees. And I think I want to have all of those things in my build, just maybe on a slightly smaller scale. Really quick though, I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsor today, Animal Kingdom Coin Raid. It is a super fun mobile game that you can download for free right now on Android and iOS. And if you use the link down below to download it, you also get a welcome bonus. Basically in Animal Kingdom, you collect coins by like building bridges and exploring the other kingdoms. You can also attack and steal coins from other islands, including your friends' islands, all right from your phone. There's a ton of fun mini games you can play that are super rewarding. And every level of this game is actually a lot harder than it looks. As you're exploring islands and playing the game, you can also collect cards. And when you complete a collection, you get a ton of prizes like gems and free power-ups and stuff. I've got to travel soon for a wedding and I've got a super long layover. So I'll tell you right now, I know what I'm doing as I'm sitting in the airport for a few hours next week. You know, I realize this is a little bit different than like building a vet in The Sims, but it, it's still animal related. It's also really, really fun. So if you're into like earning coins and building up your islands and leveling up and stuff like that, I think you'll really enjoy this game. And of course, there's there's always the added bonus of like attacking and stealing coins from your friend's islands, right? So if you're up for the challenge, you can download Animal Kingdom Coin Raid for free on iOS and Android, and I'll have a link down below to download it too. Thanks again to Animal Kingdom for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's get back to a different kind of Animal Kingdom, a, um, a vet clinic. So we are jumping straight into the speed build here, and you can see already that I am building this on a much smaller lot than the default vet clinic is on. This is a 20 by 20 lot in like the more downtown area of Brindleton Bay. To kind of get your bearings, this is next door to where Katarina Lynx lives, that cat lady. And this lot used to be an empty house. It was just like a sort of nice, maybe converted factory looking build and I bulldozed it. And now I'm building a more like Cape Cod style vet clinic in its place. I had a couple of priorities in building this. Number one, I wanted it to be a lot smaller. That's partially for like gameplay functionality, but also that way it would be a lot cheaper because to actually play as a vet and run a vet clinic in game, your sim has to buy the vet clinic. And this one is already 50,000 simoleons. So becoming a vet is definitely not a cheap endeavor. Like it's kind of hard to get started without using money cheats. And so with this, I kind of wanted to lessen the burden a little bit. Although I will say I wasn't exactly trying to make it cheap. I just was trying to make it not ridiculously expensive, you know? I also used only the base game and cats and dogs. So if you have this pack, you can definitely download this lot. Again, my goal is kind of to make it super playable and like easily accessible to you. I will say that I understand it's looking a bit like a house right now as we're first getting started, but that's kind of what I was going for. I sort of wanted it to be like a cute little cozy family run vet's office near downtown. And I do think that I achieved that, dare I say. I did play test this, but I won't lie. I, um, I play tested it after I put it on the gallery. I know that sounds a little bit backwards, but I got a little overexcited and just straight uploaded it and it does work. It's completely functional. Although there is one small detail that maybe I messed up with. I didn't put any like radio stations or music players in here. And I don't even know if this is true or not, but I had people coming to the vet and like getting upset with me and leaving bad reviews because the ambiance was off. Granted, it was just one day that I played and it was one person who said that, but my Twitch chat said that it was because I didn't have any music playing. So so it's possible that if you play in this lot, you might want to add like a wall speaker or something just to appease the Sims a little bit more. It certainly wouldn't hurt to try, but I did not realize that they would demand music in my waiting area. So for that, I am sorry. I guess I should have expected them to be a little bit demanding and judgy, but I, I didn't see it coming. At this point though, we're actually kind of getting somewhere in the build with the actual floor plan and stuff. So you can see when you first walk in, the front door is kind of on the side of the building and you enter into a kind of long skinny waiting area. It's really not a big space. It's just got a couch and that 
that little check-in machine. It kind of looks like an ATM. And then from there, there's a little tiny bathroom, a little two by one bathroom off that entryway. And then also a hallway that you can access all of the other rooms from. So sort of going around that, we've got two exam rooms and then one surgery room. There's also a tiny break room for the staff because when you're actually playing in a vet clinic, you're obviously here running it all day. Like honestly, in my own gameplay of things like this, when I've run stores or vet clinics or restaurants, oftentimes I'll have my sim like live upstairs above it. I'll have a bed and a TV and a full kitchen and I'll just lock the door so my customers can't get up there. I didn't do that with this one because it's kind of on the smaller side, but that's a pro tip for any sort of lot like this that you're trying to build. Oftentimes it's nice to just pretend to live above the store. It is kind of weird because you can't actually live above the store, but you can kind of just pretend that you do and, and never leave and it works. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that I was feeling really inspired by some of your builds when I started doing this one. In particular, there was a lot called the Feathered and Furry Clinic by MK3304 on the gallery that I just loved. They had built it using my shell challenge, so obviously it was a bit different of a shape, but it was kind of a similar vibe, like with the more Cape Cod style, like family run vet clinic. And I just adored that lot. Like that build specifically is the whole reason that I wanted to build this one. So I'm gonna list their gallery ID and stuff down below. You might remember that build because I showed it off in my shell tour video that I did last week. So I'll link that down below too. Honestly, if I had not seen you all building vet clinics, I certainly would not have built a vet clinic. I just kind of forget about them. I guess it's partially because they're not really a huge feature of my own personal gameplay. Like I oftentimes will play with pets in the Sims, but because I find it kind of annoying to go to the vet, I realize this sounds really bad, but because I find it kind of annoying to go to the vet, oftentimes in those saves, I'll just go to the vet once, buy a bunch of like wellness treats and then come home and never go back. Because then when your Sims pet gets sick, you can just give them a wellness treat as opposed to like bringing them to the vet, getting a checkup, having them have the cone on their head. It just, it just takes one treat and it's a lot easier. But again, I realize that me saying I find the vet annoying is probably not a good thing to say. I'm talking about the Sims, not in real life. Although I won't lie to you, I have certainly had my moments at the vet recently in real life. I've got two stories, in fact. So the first one, last year I get a really frantic call from my sister about our family's cat who is bleeding and she can't figure out why. Our parents were at work, she didn't have her license yet, and she's like absolutely hysterical because the cat is bleeding. Obviously I'm stressed too, so I rush over to the house. We pick up poor Lemon, get him in his carrier, and then drive off to the vet. Now Lemon is not a huge fan of cars, as I think most cats are not. And he was also super stressed, obviously, because he was in a little bit of pain. So the entire time on the way to the vet, the cat is screaming in the back seat of the car. My sister was sitting back there with him, like with the carrier, and I was in the front seat driving to the vet. It's like 15 minutes away. It felt like it was hours away because the drive was so miserable. I need you to picture this though, right? Like the cat is screaming because he's so stressed out. Me and my sister are both sobbing in the car all the way to the vet because we're so stressed out. And at the time, because of COVID, you couldn't go into the vet with them. So we get there, they come out, they just take them and leave. And then we're left sitting there in the car sobbing hysterically. And at the time, because of COVID, we couldn't go into the vet with him. They just came out and then took his carrier and went inside, leaving us just sitting there in the car sobbing again. Luckily, he was perfectly fine. He had actually somehow pulled one of his claws out, which is horrible. So it was bleeding a little bit. And then we obviously freaked out over it. They just like cleaned it, disinfected it, and they gave him some medicine for it. It grew back. Don't worry. He's perfectly fine. But the whole situation with the driving and stuff, very, very distressing. I think it's important to note that I also have a lot of driving anxiety. I've been getting a lot better, but like, especially then at the time, I was not better. And so this cat screaming in my car was very bad. And the other one, oh my God, this was a few months ago. It's funny now, okay, because the dog is fine. I want to make that clear. But at the time, very much not funny. I was at my parents' house and we were all sitting around the dining table eating dinner together. One of my parents' dogs, Mako, was like underneath the table just sitting there chilling with us. And then Mako stood up and kind of like shook himself. And when he did that, it like sprayed something onto Dan's leg. Blood. It sprayed blood onto Dan's leg. Again, horrifying, but kind of funny now when you look back at it a little bit. It's just a little bit funny. Mako is almost 10 though, so he's getting a little bit older. And so when this happened, we were obviously very distressed by it. Immediately like rushed to the emergency vet. I need to make it clear that he was bleeding from his parts. So when he stood up and did a little shake, his parts splattered blood on Dan's leg. Like I said, kind of funny now, not funny at the time. Well, we immediately rush to the emergency vet with him. It's like 8.30 at night. They get him in, they do a little urine sample, which by 
by the way, I had never considered how you do a urine sample from a dog before, but like they fully had my mom go walk him outside and then hold a cup underneath him to catch the pee, which I suppose makes sense. But like, I, I don't know. I hadn't really been to the vet with my parents' dogs before. So I guess I never really thought about it. So that was an experience. Luckily, it turns out it was just like a UTI or something. He had been swimming in the lake a lot that week. And so they thought that maybe he got an infection from the water. Totally treatable, gave him some medicine. He was perfectly fine, hasn't happened again. But obviously at the time, like I mentioned, it was very stressful. I feel like both of these circumstances are kind of funny to look back on, not because of like the pets being not healthy, but just because of the circumstances of them. Like if you could have been a fly on the wall in the car with me and my sister when Lemon had to go to the vet, oh my God. I really cannot emphasize how distraught we were this whole drive. I mean, it's bad enough that the poor cat is like hurting, right? But the fact that he was screaming so much in the backseat of the car, oh, it was horrible. I sincerely hope that all of your pets are happy and healthy and, and perfectly fine. I hope their checkups go smoothly and they are all completely and totally good. Now we have made a lot of progress with my Sims vet, which hopefully will not have any incidents like these. Although your Sims pets do get kind of weird sicknesses. <laughs> they'll have like rainbow poop, they'll have like a glowing nose, they'll turn blue. And arguably all of those things are very concerning. Like if my cat were to randomly turn blue, I, I would be very worried. If suddenly her nose turned bright red and started glowing, like lighting up and glowing like Rudolph, I would be a little bit worried. On a happier note though, I did add a few like fun things into this build that I kind of wanted to point out. So number one, you can see in that hallway, I put like some little pet paw prints on the floor, like leading you to one of the exam rooms. I also tried to theme each of the exam rooms in a different color. So there's one surgery room and then two exam rooms. And I've got like a pink room, a blue room, and then a green room. I put off the wallpaper until the very, very end, as I always do. You've probably noticed this by now, but at the end, they've got like the linoleum flooring and then just like white walls with a tiny strip of colored tile at the top. And it turned out really cute. I'll show you like in the tour at the end of the video, but I'm quite proud of the furnishing of this building. I always feel like I'm so terrible at building community lots. And so when I do one that's in my opinion, successful, I feel very proud of myself. I know that's kind of silly. It's just really not my strong suit doing like these more community lot type buildings. These like public spaces are not very easy for me. This one was really fun though. There's so many items that came with cats and dogs that I kind of forgot existed. There's like x-rays and little like vet posters and so many little cutesy things to add in. Also in the back of this lot, cause there's kind of like a, a backyard. I don't know if backyard is the wrong word cause it's like the back of this vet building. So it's not really a yard, but there's a lot of grassy space back there. And so I wanted to use some of the like cats and dogs, like obstacle course stuff for the pets. And so in that big backspace, there's like a little picnic table. I put some catnip plants growing in like some little planter boxes. And then in the main backspace, there's a little obstacle course. Don't worry, I did play test that and it works. Couple things to note with using those obstacle course items that I hadn't really thought of before. You probably should not use move objects when doing them. For the most part, move objects is like a pretty fine cheat to use. Like if you think your Sims can fit in an area, they probably can. But with things like the obstacle course where they kind of have like gameplay tied to there being a certain route the pets take, I didn't want to by accident put like the different pieces too close together and not leave enough space for them to like jump through hoops and stuff. So I made sure to turn the cheat off when placing it. Also something that I had completely forgotten about when it comes to those obstacle courses is that the hoops can be set on fire. I'll show you in a minute, but I am absolutely not kidding. Like when you have your pets jump through the hoops in those courses, you can also choose to light the hoop on fire and it will just sit there flaming <laughs> as your dog is jumping through it. I don't think they can get hurt by it. I think it's just a visual effect because for the most part, your pets can't like get hurt or die from sickness or anything. The only way that cats and dogs can die in the Sims is of old age. So you're not gonna like light them on fire by accident jumping through a hoop, but it is a little bit distressing to, to look at this like flaming hoop that your tiny weenie dog is jumping through. Oh my goodness. And one other weird thing about this lot that I did not realize is that you can't put the like cat and dog friendly lot traits on vet clinics. So you know how cats and dogs comes with a couple traits like the cat hangout stuff and the cat and dog friendly ones. And those lot traits will attract pets to the lot. So if you wanted to build like a cat cafe, you could put those on it and then cats would kind of flock to it. You can't use those traits here on this vet clinic, which I was kind of surprised by, but I guess thinking about it, maybe it makes sense because then the only pets that come here are patients. Cause it might be kind of confusing if your Sim was like bringing their dog to the vet just for fun and you couldn't actually treat the dog. So at first I was like, oh no, no one can just bring their pets here to like hang out in the back and, and use the training course. But then I thought more about it and I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Cause it would be a little bit confusing, right? There's also Sim limits. I forget how many it is, but there's like maybe like 20, 
25 or something sims is the max that can be on a lot at any time. And so I guess if you had sims coming here that like didn't need to be here, it would kind of mess up the sim limit stuff too. Although I've never had like 25 patients at once when I've run a vet, but I suppose it does kind of make sense when you think about it. See, now we're back here in the back actually building this little obstacle course thing. And I thought that I would have more space than I actually did. I feel like it ended up being a lot smaller than I anticipated it being, but I did set out with the intention of making this a lot small. So I guess I shouldn't be acting surprised. But now that we're on the exterior, we're kind of getting close to the end of this build here. We're just putting on some finishing touches. And while I'm finishing this, I've got two questions for you. Number one, this one is Sims related. When was the last time you played with the vet career in the Sims? Cause I don't really use this one very often. And now that I think about it, I probably should because it's actually really fun. Tell me in the comments. And then number two, this is completely unrelated to the Sims. When did you start school? Because my poor little sister is starting her senior year of high school and she went back on August 10th. I know that is like super early compared to most places. Like generally Florida kind of starts school a little bit sooner, but I'm curious to know when your school starts up again, because always in my mind, August is like normal because I grew up here. <laughs> so I'd love to hear when your school actually starts up again. I know most of you aren't actually in school again, but you know when school starts generally in your area, right? We're all seeing the back to school ads. We all know it's happening right now. So if you want to download this lot though, it is on my gallery. My name's just Lil Simsy on Origins. You can just search it up and download this. It only uses the base game and cats and dogs. So if you have cats and dogs, you should be able to use this lot. And now that we're kind of wrapping up the build here, I'm actually going to pop back into the game real time and give you a better tour because it's always kind of hard to see what I'm actually doing when I'm speeding around and like turning the camera so much. So I want to show you a better like up close and personal tour. For this, I'm going to use everyone's favorite sim, our dear friend, Stanley Humphrey. He runs this paws and claws vet clinic over here in downtown Brindleton Bay. He also happens to have two weenie dogs named Ketchup and Mustard. I think I'll bring us all to work today. So this is the finished build. As you can see, it's kind of cozy from the outside. I also put this like really adorable little cat moon thing on the roof. In the front here, there's like a little sign and also a little bench with some dog toys sitting out by it. When you come around the back, we've got this spot where all the catnip is. I put all four kinds. There's like the catnip, the nap nip, the nuzzle nip, and also the mad nip. I guess I probably should have avoided some of these. Like for example, mad nip will make your cats enraged with pure anger, but it's kind of fun. Nice to have. In the back here, we've got that little obstacle course I was talking about. You can see that I've lit the on fire. I was not kidding when I said you could light the hoops on fire. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, you failed. Oh, good going, ketchup. Do it again. Do it again. Jump. Jump. Oh, come on. I guess, I guess, well, when you consider the scale, I suppose that is a little bit tall for you. You're like this big. Can you do this one? Oh, you can do that one just fine. Come on. Oh, how did, oh, okay, never mind. I was gonna say, how does that make sense? Anyway, that's the back of the building. I think the exterior turned out pretty cute though. I really like the dormers and this little like sort of scalloped siding over here. And then when you actually walk inside, you come up this little porch, there's some pet bowls and stuff. The waiting area has got some fish. It's got like some extra leashes and stuff. I did add in that music because they were being so whiny about it. You can check into the vet right here. And there's also a bathroom for all the customers to use through this little door is like the main vet hallway. We also have that like pet vending machine right here so you can buy the pet treats and stuff. To the left, we've got a little staff room. So I put like a fridge and a coffee maker and stuff in here. I also put a laptop so you could use the computer to get your phone up if you need to. The staff also have their own private bathroom. I guess in a building this small, you probably don't need to have two bathrooms, but it kind of worked out nicely. So I put it. This room right here is the blue surgery room. So your sim can do all the pet surgeries in here. And then we've got those two different exam rooms. These are all totally functional by the way, I, I did test it. I like the color theme a lot of these, like the blue, green, and pink. I think it's kind of nice. Oh my God, what are you doing? Are you fighting each other? Oh, this is not good. You know, I think on that note, I'm I'm gonna call it. We're, we're gonna cut the video here. I hope that you enjoyed this one because I loved building this vet clinic. It makes me kind of want to build more of the like weirder community lots that I don't build very often. Oh, maybe I'll do a karaoke bar next. That's a good idea. And thanks again to our friends over at Animal Kingdom Coin Raid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check it out, you can use the link down below. And Animal Kingdom is free on iOS and Android. So it's worth downloading because I think you're going to like playing it. With that being said, though, I'm going to end this video right here. So have the best rest of your day, everybody, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everyone. This video is like a 15 minute voiceover. It took me an hour to record. If you only knew how many times I repeated myself and had to cut things. Oh, it's actually embarrassing. I'm embarrassed.